In this video, I want to demonstrate one method of repurposing a PLR video. My hope is that over the course of the next few weeks, by showing you this and a few other methods of editing and repurposing private label rights videos, you will see just how easy it is to end up with a newly created product without going through all the time-consuming, life-training, tedious tasks of traditional product creation. First, I want to show you what we will be starting off with and what we're going to be ending up with. Then, we're going to detail the steps involved in getting from beginning to the ending. Now we have our before or the original video here and the after or the repurposed video here. Now I've advanced both of them to about the 30 second mark and they're exactly the same in content but 110 percent different in the look. We're going to cover what we did to get to this throughout this video. Now in doing this we use some premium tools. While there may be some open source or free tools to accomplish what we will be doing here, I chose to use premium tools that will most always have more functionality and features than the freebie alternatives. Now, each of the premium tools used here do have a free trial period of 30 days or more, so the I don't have the money for these tools excuse just went out the window. Now let's take a quick look at the tools that we're going to be using here. Here we have Camtasia Studio. You can find that at techsmith.com forward slash Camtasia. And while you're here, you may want to check out some of the other freebies as well. Because one of the things that I also used to get the screen captures was Jing and Snagit. Both of which are from the TechSmith family. Come on back here to products. You can get either the Snagit, that's going to cost you, or the Jing, that's not going to cost you. But either one of these can be used for the screen captures that we're going to be using throughout this video series. Another one of the tools, primary tool, is PowerPoint 2010. You can go to Microsoft, or in this case, office.microsoft.com forward slash PowerPoint, and that'll bring you to this, that'll default to this page right here. And another tool is Edit Plus. Now this is the text editor that I use but the reason why I use this and not other text editors is because this one also has a multi search and replace function. Now I'm also using a transcript from the PLR video. If you do not have a transcript of your PLR video, then a little tip here, I use Fiverr.com for this and as the name implies, it's going to cost you about five bucks. Now if you're going to be using Fiverr.com, my suggestion is to do the search for transcribe audio. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. And then I'm going to ask you to filter by rating and you've got these options right here. This is the default filtering. You can check for popularity or by rating, but I'm going to go with rating. Another thing is that you should also have an organized workspace. Time is money, and if you have to search all over your computer for an image or a text document because it was not in the folder you thought it was, well, you're wasting time and wasting money. So what I suggest is to create a series of folders related to the one project and get in the habit of doing this for every project. As a matter of fact, I have a template of folders that whenever I'm creating a new project, I just copy and paste and rename that template to the project that I'm currently working on. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. Get this guy out of the way here. Get these guys out of the way. Here is an example of the working project folder template. So we open this up. Inside of here, I have three main folders and a text document titled Notes. And this is just a guide to go by, uh, do whatever you want. The key item here, though, is to start off organized, and that way it'll make your whole project process a lot more easier. And inside of the video folder, I've got the folder types that I may not always, but I may create. That way the folders are there and it's a good reminder for me that, hey, I need to have an AVI or, hey, I need to have a WMV. And, of course, if I don't use them, no big deal. I'll simply, after I'm done, delete the empty folders. But this is my template and all I have to do is simply copy this so that I'm not changing the original. So I just copy this and paste it. As you can see, it adds the word copy at the end. And then I simply rename this, the copy one, to my current project. Boom, I'm ready to go. Totally organized right from the get-go. Now that I think we've got all of our ducks in a row, let's go ahead and get started. 
Now the first couple of steps in our process we've already touched on in the prior video. Number one, we've got an organized workspace. We've got our folders created that will contain our images, audios, videos, and so on. And number two, we've already got the transcripts to the video. Whether it was done by ourselves, we, or we outsourced it, or it came with the PLR video package to begin with. Number three, we want to review the transcripts and edit where needed. In other words, go ahead and pop open the transcript file and the video file and follow along your transcripts while you're playing the video to make sure that the transcript was done properly. Make any additions or changes as necessary. Once you've gone through the editing process, go ahead and come up here and click on Save. That way any changes made will keep. Now the number four, you want to read the transcript while watching the video and in the places on the transcript where an image is referenced, go ahead and take a screen capture of the video, that's where that Jing or snag is going to come in at, and label it with a numerical value so you know where in the transcript that image will be needed. So in other words, right here, for example, here, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Let's head over to our C panel, control panel, and come on down here. Now, unless you've got some kind of an image referencing where here is, your viewer of the PowerPoint slide or the repurposed video is not going to have a clue what you're talking about. So at this point on the video, you want to use your Snagit or your Jing or whatever type of screen capture software you've got. Use that to capture that portion of the video. Label it. Maybe even make a note here on your transcript, image one, and then label that image, image one making it as simple and as easy for you as, as possible so that when time comes for us to put all these things together you're going to know exactly where that image is going to go. Now in step five you want to prepare your transcript for the PowerPoint slides and this is where the edit plus text editor is going to come in at. Now by prepare what I mean is let's open this up in our edit plus text editor and get it ready for the slides and what we're going to do is have one sentence per line that's going to transfer over to our PowerPoint slides pretty smoothly. Hang on I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now I've opened up that text document or transcript in the edit plus software and as you can see here for example here's a period here this is broken down into paragraphs I believe but what we want is we want each sentence to be on a line of its own so what we would do here is come up here to search replace that's the box that pops up go to more and right here just put in a period then down here you want to replace it with a period and hit the return key or the enter key so that it'll move things down to the next line click on replace all and close this out and now we need to do some editing again depending upon how your transcript shows up but we just want a space between each sentence and if need be like this one here is a little bit off just do what you gotta do to get one sentence space another sentence space another sentence now if you've got a super long sentence then you may want to go ahead and alter that by putting instead of a comma put a couple of dots and then bring this down to the next sentence so you've got each one of these sentences here, each one of these lines will be a slide on your PowerPoint slide. Now and if you've got a rambling sentence it may not all fit on a PowerPoint slide. Well, let's see here, we've got a super long sentence right here. Let's go ahead and chop this guy right here. Dot 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 enter enter and then put a couple of dots there. I don't know how good English this is but this will work for our, for our demonstration. I've already gone through this and prepped a text document already that's got all the proper spacing and everything it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and get this guy out of the way and open up our PowerPoint software. Now the next step is we're going to go ahead and create our slides and save them. Now I'm going to do that by opening up that text document by going to File, Open, then navigate to the location of that text document. Now you may not see it right off the bat, but I know that it's here. The reason why it's not showing up is because right now I'm looking for all PowerPoint presentations, not text documents. So to do that, I'm going to hit this drop down arrow, come on down here and look for all outlines. Just click on that and here we go. That's the one that I know is ready. Click on open and boom. Now then it looks a little funky, no worries, we're going to get that fixed here. 
So we're going to go through and set up our slides first. We'll come back here in a second, check for the spelling and the empty slides and get all that stuff ready. But right now what I want to do is select all my slides, select the first one, hold the control key down and hit the letter A as an apple on my keyboard. That selects all the slides. Now that I want to come up here to View, Slide Master, untick the footer, and this is personal preference, but you may also want to check out a theme or two, and or leave it with the white and go with some kind of a background style. Yeah, well, that looks pretty cool. Let's go with that well. Now then, we're going to go ahead and close out the master, select all of our slides again. Again, you select the first slide, hold the control key down on your keyboard, and hit the letter A as an apple, and then come up here to Layout, and title slide. That's the very first one. You see how that kind of centers things a little bit? Looks much nicer. Now then, you can come on through here and delete all the empty slides. Again, let's go ahead and select all of our slides. Control key, letter A. Then come on up here to spell check or you can also hit the F7 on your keyboard and that will check for spelling. Boom. So all of our spelling is correct. Formatting is pretty good. Again, you can go through here and pretty things up a little bit more if you want to. Or maybe you might want this word here to pop down on this line here, depending upon how picky you are. Again, make sure you've, you've got things formatted and looking the way that you want them to. Then, all of those images that you captured earlier in your step four, then you want to go through and insert those images. For example, right here, you can, ins you can click on insert here and insert that image, or you can simply copy that image from that folder and then right click and paste that image in here. Then just adjust the size of that image and the location of that image. You may also need to adjust the text either justify it right or left and then put that image left or right depending upon how you have it set up again it's personal preference at this point you've got all the content you've got the text you've got the images and you're putting it all in your PowerPoint slides in our next step step 7 we're gonna go ahead and record our PowerPoint slide using Camtasia Studio now in this step step 7 we're going to record the PowerPoint slide through the Camtasia Studio add-on feature. And I just want to point out also that I've gone through and edited out all the slides, added the images. Basically, this is the PowerPoint slide series that I used to create that repurposed video that we saw at the very beginning. As you can see here, for example, I've already added the images. This is the right justified that I was talking about as far as the adjusting the text come on down here uh, this one I just put right in the center and these are all just screen captures of the video the original video now some of these you can be a little fancy by adding animation to certain images and as we record our PowerPoint slide we've got it set up by default to where every time you click on the mouse the slide the next slide will pop up and if there's animation involved then as soon as that slide pops up you click your mouse again then the animation will take place that's the way that the default settings are you can adjust those default settings but to keep things simple I did not I'm not going to go into great detail on how to use PowerPoint just know that there are plenty of tutorials out there on that topic so if you are going to be a little more fancy with your repurposed video, just know that you can do a lot of that cool stuff. So now that we've got our PowerPoint slides set up, and, and be sure to save your work throughout the process, so if something does happen, you've got a good copy throughout the process. So now then, we come on up here to add-ons, or add-ins rather, and go to record, and at this point, things are set up so that every time you hit your mouse button, the next slide will pop up and like I said the animation if any will come in with the next click of the mouse and the next click of the mouse will bring on the next slide and so on so at this point once you click on the record there'll be a couple of more options that will pop up before the actual recording starts and depending on how you have things set up if you hit the escape key that'll stop the recording maybe the function key at the top of your keyboard F9 might pause it F10 might stop it like the escape key does However, whatever, just simply read the text 
hit the mouse button to advance to the next slide, read the text, hit the mouse button to advance to the next slide, and so on. That's how easy this process is. And that's basically the end of this step. We've got our video created, and in the next step, we're going to do a little bit of editing. Now in the last couple of steps here, step 8 for example, we're going to import and edit that video that was, that was created from our PowerPoint slides. And then the final step, step 9, we're going to simply render or produce our final video. Whatever flash format you're wanting to produce to send to your customers, that's going to be the final step. So we're pretty much done. Now at this point, this is by the way version 7.1 of Camtasia Studio. We want to first come up here to import media wherever that file was saved at that's where you want to navigate to as you see here this is a pptx that's the file name for the camtasia studio raw video file created from within powerpoint so we just simply select that click on open drop this guy down into our timeline here choose whatever dimensions you want to have your final result as so if we want, let's say, 800 by 600, we'll go that route. And you can see how it's got some, some black border around here. You can adjust that pretty easily. Uh, for example, by coming over here to make sure that the guide is at the very beginning of the video. Come over here to zoom and pan. One down here, make sure that the aspect ratio box is ticked. And grab one of these corners here and just play around with this until you get it adjusted. And whatever adjustments you make over here, you can see over here in the preview box. So let's make this down a little bit. Hit the arrow keys on my keyboard just to finalize things. And we're good to go there. And that will hold out throughout the entire video. Then come on in here, and we don't need the audio too. That's all blank. So we can just select that, right click, and remove from timeline and do whatever editing you want in here. Maybe there's some uhs or some spaces or the dog barked or you belched or whatever in the process of recording your video. Just go ahead and delete that out. Make things all proper and nice and add any transitions that you may want, call outs, whatever. At this point, you then want to come on up here to File, Save Project As, and then give it a name and save this in the cam folder if you're following my directions anyway as far as the template folders that I'm working with and then once everything is done come over here to produce and share choose whatever flash format you're wanting to produce it as click on next and then follow the bouncing ball it'll ask you where do you want it to be saved at what name do you want to give it and then click on finish and it'll go ahead and render out Depending upon the power of your computer and the file size, depends on how long it's going to take to render out. And that's it. So thank you very much for watching my series of videos on how you can repurpose a private label write video, at least ways, using this one method. As I mentioned at the beginning, there are several methods that I'm going to be covering over the course of the next few weeks. This is just one. Thank you much for watching. Have a great day.